Gen Con 2024 is nearly here, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my 30 most anticipated board games from this convention. Now, if you've been living under a rock and don't know what Gen Con is, well, Gen Con is the world's biggest and best board game convention. Well, I think it is anyway. And I always do this video every year because these are the games that I'm so excited about. They're gonna be demoing all these great and wonderful new games. And I'm gonna be talking about 30 of them right now. We've got 24 board games plus six expansions. So let's get straight into it. Now we have my very first, my most anticipated, I'm gonna do this from my most anticipated down to my least most anticipated. Anyway, you, you know what I mean. Natara New Beginning. Now, games like Everdell, games like Creature Comforts, games like Lands of Galzea, these are all beautiful animal themed worlds and that's what Natara is. But what this is, is this is gonna be a bit heavier game. So it's gonna be more medium to heavy weight. So in Natara New Beginning, we are these animal tribes in this bright post-humanity world. So with the help of your unique tribe leader and your explorers, you will explore, build authority, and take control over four distinct areas. Now let's have a look at some of the art here. This is what we're looking at. Look, a whole bunch of Euro, Euro goodness right there. And there's some of the cards. Beautiful. So there's an Atara. That's the first one I'm absolutely pumped for. The next one we're gonna talk about is Galactic Crew. So this is gonna be another more medium to heavyweight game. Now, this absolutely drips in vibes of Vital Lacerda. Now, Vital Lacerda, the man who makes these big box that, you know, they're just heavyweight games, absolutely brilliant. Well, this is screaming that. And one of the reasons why it's screaming it is because if we have Ian O'Toole artwork, and Ian O'Toole always does all the Lacerda big boxes, well, he's done this Galactic Cruise big box. And what I should have mentioned is both of these games, the last one and this one, are both gonna be on Kickstarter shortly. So, Galactic Cruise. So what have we got here? Well, we are in this luxury cruise liner space travel company. So we're the first company to offer extended stay space vacation. So as a supervisor of the company, you'll be expected to not only build these shuttles and satisfy our guests, but you're also gonna help the company thrive by enhancing our company network, inventing new technologies, and growing our workforce. Just, just, just Euro yumminess right there. And let's have a look at some of the images. There we go. So just give you a bit of an idea of what it's gonna look like. Next one, so we've got sort of two heavyweight games. The next one certainly isn't heavy at all. This is gonna be more of a light to medium weight game, and this is Harvest. Now, Harvest by Keymaster Games. Now, Keymaster Games brought us Parks, and Parks is in my top 10 board games of all time. It is a beautiful, amazing, amazing board game, and that's what I'm hoping Harvest will be. And the other thing is, we are back in another animal thing world, and you're gonna notice something here. I absolutely love animal themed worlds. Anyway, Harvest, we are now farming with beautiful little farmers out there, like cows and whatever, and we're out there just farming. So look, not much here on the page, but look, let's read what it says. You're taking on the role of farmer, each with their unique uh, pension for working the land. Um, you're gonna have special round around benefits, uh, sunrise cards, wheelbarrows around town to gather resources, gonna be planting seeds, tending the land and harvesting crops. If that excites you, well, certainly excites me, then let's move on because what I wanna have a look at is this is a, also a Kickstarter, but this Kickstarter has already launched and already finished. So this actually gives us an idea of what we're looking at here. So there we go, that shows you the board there. Look, the art's quite unique and different, but again, an animal themed farming game. Yeah, color me interested. Next one, we have Reef Project from Board and Dice. Now, Board and Dice, brought us wonderful games like Can You and all those other tea games. But what we have here is we are now in the coral reef, the reef project. We're trying to save the coral reef because the coral reef's dying and our job is to make sure it stays forever. Anyway, so we're gonna be scientists from various fields and we're gonna be researching the ecological complexity and significance of the reefs, collaborating, uh, commanding scientific vessels, embarking on journeys of reef conservation. Cool. So we have, what are some of our mechanisms here? Area majority, point to point movement, set collection. Anyway, all you care about is what does the game look like? And the game looks damn amazing. That is looking pretty good. Anyway, that is, what are we? Reef project. Next one. Let's go to Japan now. My good mate, Danny from Board Game Century, he has been talking up this game a lot lately and I am so excited for this. Now, what we are is we're like this, this travel company and we're, we're actually planning our itinerary over a work week. Let's, well, let's read what it says here. 
game consists of 13 rounds in which players draw activity cards illustrated by Japanese artists, and they're going to strategically place them in different days in their week-long itinerary. These can't-miss tourist attractions will have you bouncing between Tokyo and Kyoto as you try to puzzle out optimal activities to maximize your experience while balancing your resources. Now, that gets my juices flowing right there, and this is what we're looking at. And beautiful art, Japanese theme. Love Japan, love Japan. I need to go back there very soon. Anyway, that's let's go to Japan. Fairly light game. Talking about another, you know, I guess light to medium weight game, and we have Knitting Circle. Now, oh, now you must know what Calico is. Calico is, look, it's an amazing game where you're building this quilt, or you're, you're making this quilt for your beautiful cats to lie on, because that's all cats do. They just sleep all day because they're just lazy. But anyway, cats and quilts, that is Calico. And this is a very, very thinky, puzzly game. Now, look, you can play multiple people, but it's very much a solo game at its heart. And that's what I'm expecting with Knitting Circle. Now, I don't know much about it. All I know is Knitting Circle, well, again, let's read. Knitting Circle is standalone follow-up to the hit spatial game Calico. Cool, we know it's a hit game. Players are now knitters competing to create the coziest, most beautiful assortment of garments. Rounds are simple. Collect yarn from the central basket and knit into garments while trying to get your colour combinations and patterns just right. That screams Calico and I am so excited for, I guess, just a different standalone variation of this game. So there we go. That is Knitting Circle. Now. Let's move on from Knitting Circle. Again, a lot of animal themed games here. Let's move to another animal themed game. But I swear there are other games that aren't animal themed games, actually, not many, but there's a few. Lone Wolves. This cover, this cover, and the next game are going to be the most beautiful board game covers, and this is what brought my attention. And this is what things like Gen Con is really amazing for. All these games that I didn't know were even coming or even existed. And all of a sudden, I can have a look and I can research, and all of a sudden, I'm now excited for these sort of games. So, Lone Wolves. So, players become the leader of wolf packs in Lone Wolves, vying over regions to become the alpha. Now, just side note, how good is the alpha? I've got the alpha down there somewhere. Oh, amazing game. So, anyway, I'm getting very distracted. Alpha, great. Lone Wolves, hopefully great. Uh, to assert your dominance and ensure victory, dispatch wolves to territories. The stronger wolf wins, strengthening your pack's position, but despite gaining a scar from the battle and becoming a lone wolf, the weaker one learns from the experience, improving its pack status for the next encounter. How freaking amazing is this? It's going to be a two-player game, back and forth battle. I love games like that. Oh, like Hannah Makoji. Now that's, that's a great game. Cape of Europe. Oh, I can talk all day about two-player games. But here we go, lone wolves. That's what we're looking at. Look, card game, back and forth. Love it. And this is the other game that caught my attention with its cover, Nature. How stunning is that cover? Let me just, let me just open that up. I just want to admire that beautiful artwork. I love that. Anyway, let's go back. Well, actually, let's have a look at a couple of photos while we're here. And just a whole bunch of animals. Cool. Anyway, great artwork, but let's see what Nature is. And again, this is going to be another Kickstarter launching very soon. Uh, Nature is a modular game system that allows you to build and explore a unique ecosystem each time you play. Experience a dynamic ecosystem where food is scarce and predators lurk. Adapt your species with traits like fast to evade predators, nestling, uh, to, uh, nesting to grow your population, or climbing to reach fruit high in a canopy. Welcome to the beauty of nature where every game brings new worlds to explore. Now this is going to be a modular game with new modules getting released in 2026 as well. Look, nature looks amazing. Look, if you're interested, again, jump on Kickstarter. But look, let's just stop for a second. Look, I don't back Kickstarters anymore. That's something just I just don't believe in anymore. But if you love Kickstarters, make sure you have a look at these. But if you don't back Kickstarters, that's totally fine. Most of these games should hit retail and you can just buy them then. That's what I plan on doing. Anyway, nature. Next one, rant over. Perseverance. Episodes three and four. Now, you might be able to see right up there. Yep, you can see it right there. We are on a cruise ship, and this cruise ship, this crashed into this island, and this island is, is basically full of dinosaurs. You're setting up camp there, and all of a sudden, there's these dinosaurs around you, and you're trying to protect you know, security measures so the dinosaurs don't get you. Then eventually, you sort of start training the dinosaurs, and these are standalone games. There's two in that box. There's going to be two in three and four, and the journey's just going to keep happening and evolving and eventually I assume we're going to get off the island or we're going to build a big city we're going to do something anyway perseverance by mind clash games heavy heavy game a lot in it but boy oh boy if especially if you like the first two jump on board three and four next we have let's have a look at seti search for extraterrestrial intelligence 
Now, what grabbed me from this one is, this is a layered modular board that rotates around and, and different layers are gonna rotate at different speeds. And you're trying to transmit, to sort of speak to these sort of alien technologies. And you've gotta get your timing right to sort of get the right light of sight to transmit. Anyway, it sounds fascinating. Now, space games generally aren't for me, but this just seems so different and so unique. I'm absolutely fascinated. I went and had a look at Chex Game Edition here. SETI is a nice video there from Cardboard Rhino. It's gonna tell you all you need to know about it. SETI looks absolutely amazing. And again, just a slight tweak on space games there. After SETI, we have Rock Hard 1977. Now, Rock Hard. Now, this game, the designer, was an actual rock legend. Well, I, I look, legend could be a strong word, but she was definitely a rock star. Let's have a look. Jackie Fox from The Runaways. She was a rock star, and now she designed a game that she is passionate about, about being a rock star. That is so freaking cool. So Rock Hard 1977, you're an up and coming musician dreaming of making it big with your band. Over the next few months, you'll rehearse, play gigs, write songs, and promote your band. With careful planning and a little luck, you'll earn the most fame and become the best new artist of the year. So medium weight game, what do we got here? Uh, set collection, variable player powers, worker placement, yeah. I'm interested, I know nothing about it, except for the fact that if she designed it, she knows what she's talking about, so she's gonna put her passion into it. And that's what, that's what excites me. Anyway, next one, River Valley Glassworks. This is from Allplay. Now, I hadn't even heard of Allplay until I went and found these little boxes here. So we've got Couture and Chomp. These are two of the best small box games you're ever gonna find. I absolutely adore them, absolutely love it. So all of a sudden now, as soon as I see all player in the picture, I'm like, yeah, I'm interested. Another thing this one has, Andrew Bosley artwork, the guy from uh, Everdell. So he knows how to draw animals. And again, yes, it's an animal, animal themed game. Anyway, you're gonna get bored with my animal themed games, but River Valley Glassworks. This looks like a very lightweight game. So these are gonna have beautiful pieces of glass that can be found along the river, and they've attracted the most entrepreneurial woodland creatures to set up shop. So in River Valley Glassworks, you play as one of these pioneers. Uh, you're gonna be drafting glass from the market or river tiles. To do so, you have to pl play a piece from your inventory into the river, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you don't need to know. All you wanna see is what does it look like? Components look great. Look at that, they look like little jelly, squishy things. Fascinating. And that's pretty much it. And yeah, beautiful Andrew Bosley artwork. Cool, River Valley Glassworks. Next up, Foundations of Metropolis. Now, Foundations of Metropolis is the follow-up from Foundations of Rome. Now, Foundations of Rome have a lot of people who absolutely love it. Let's bring up a photo of that. I've got one here. It's 3D printed pieces that you're gonna be putting on a play mat in front of you and making it and scoring it and you, you, know, you, you know, I don't need to explain anymore. But look, now let's move away from Rome and let's move into the modern era. And we're now building a Foundations of Metropolis. So I'm gonna assume slightly tweaked mechanics, but again, same exact, same sort of gameplay. But do you know what else has similar sort of gameplay? Let's move on to the next one here. And this is Cities. Cities, this is by Steve Finn, Phil Walker Harding. Now, Phil Walker Harding, he knows a thing about the game design. I love Phil Walker Harding. But let's have a look at cities. Exact same sort of vibes. We're building 3D printed cities on this, uh, on this board in front of us here. We've got another main primary board in the middle there. It looks great. But let's read what is cities about. So you've been tasked by the city council to put together a plan to transform a whole neighborhood in your city. You have the opportunity to build new housing, office buildings, parks, and leisure areas near the waterfront. It is in your hands to make the city a better place. If that doesn't give you just, just all of the nice little, oh, feel good about myself vibes, then there we go. And just another photo, beautiful cities. Next up, yeah, you knew it, you knew it was coming, didn't you? Another animal thing, man, you knew it. Well. Let's just move the camera because I want to talk about, let's see, where is it? It's right about there somewhere. We have power plants, creature comforts, Maple Valley. Now, these are from Kids Table Board Gaming who, I seriously, I think they're my favorite publishers. I absolutely love it. I love the fact that they have the same artists for all of their games. So every game flows and every game I've played has been amazing. I love them even power plants no one talks about power plants that is probably the best game to play at like high player counts ever i love power plants anyway i digress let's move the camera back 
and let's get back into what we're talking about here, and this is Cafe Barras. Now, I don't know if that's how you say it, I'm gonna say Cafe Barras. So we are capybaras, capybaras. What sort of game has capybaras? I can't think of any other game. So it's at this point that I realize editing that capybaras, cafe barras. My goodness, how did I not see that sooner? Anyway, I'm gonna keep calling it barras, but God, I feel so stupid right now. Anyway. Oh. Everyone in town is looking for a cozy little cafe where they can relax with a good book, something to nibble on, and of course some delicious caffeinated beverages. As a capybara with a love for coffee, it's always been a dream of yours to open your own shop. Now is the perfect time, but you're not the only one opening your doors in hopes of enticing customers. Look, you can just see this is just gonna be all of the goodness with the best, my most favorite art ever. I love this beautiful art. Look how cute those capybaras are. That's, that's, that's cool. That is so cool, and there we go. I just, I just, I just want more. I just want more of kids' table board games. Biggest fan, and that's why I added two more on here. Just bonuses. These are bonuses. I've got Les. No, nothing about. But again, cool. And finally, Mackie Master. This is a reef theme of Wasabi, which has been out for a little while now, and hopefully with again more streamlined mechanics. And there's Mackie Master. Brilliant. So three games. Nice little bonus there for you. Next one we're gonna talk about, oh, Dodo's riding dinos first race. Now, let's have a think about this. Not every game has to be a heavy Euro. Not every game has to be a medium weight game. Do you know what? Some people out there have little kidlets. I have three of them, and I need to have amazing games for them to play, and this is where Dodo's riding dinos first race. Now, the original Dodo's riding dinos, let's have a look at photo here, is great. Dexterity, dexterity elements, beautiful art. The kids gonna love it. But this is even more streamlined. This is for younger kids. And I wanna make sure that all of the young kids can get into this amazing hobby. So a game like this would be absolutely perfect for them. That's all you need to know. Got young kids? Go check that one out. Next two, I've got Cascadia Rolling Hills and Cascadia Rolling Rivers. Now Cascadia, it is, it is good again. <laughs> from Flat Out Games, Calico, Verdant, um, like just some great, great games. Cascadia, really solid game. If you haven't got it, make sure you get it. But Cascadia, we are now doing Roll and Rides, and these are gonna be the only Roll and Rides on my list because I don't really do Roll and Rides that much. I like Fleet the Dice game, that's mainly about it. But then, oh, Gunshot Clever, I also like that. Okay, Cascadia Rolling Hills and Cascadia Rolling Rivers. Cool, just two different habitats, Roll and Rides, uh, different mechanics in both, or slightly different mechanics in both, and um, there you go, if you like rolling rights, I certainly like Cascadia, so maybe there's a, a match made in heaven right there. Let's move on, sea dragons. Now, my missus, she absolutely loves these little puzzly games, these games that we go back and forth on, games like our Land vs. Sea, Project L, like there's a bucket load of them that we just go back and forth and we love it. So as partners, this is, this is our best game. So let's turn the game around a bit more. These are our best games for us. And this is why I thought games like Sea Dragons would also be a great game for this. So again, a puzzly looking game. So have a look here. We are Sea Dragons. And yeah, there's a whole bunch to think about there. You can't put your Sea Dragon next to other Sea Dragons. You can't put it next to your own. And if you put it next to an opponent's, they're gonna get the points and yeah, just fun, fun, fun. So puzzly, puzzly, puzzly Sea Dragons. Let's have a read, who cares about the theme? We just know it's gonna be a fun, puzzly game. But um, humanity has become more daring when sailing the seas. More and more pirate ships venture into the forbidden seas of the gods, endangering their underwater kingdoms and the strange creatures that live there. In sea dragons, you must protect the seas by sinking pirate ships, collecting their treasures, and becoming the legendary protectors of these aquatic kingdoms. Cool, I just, I just think it looks cool. I just think it looks like it's gonna be one of those puzzly games, again, that'll be right for me and my partner. So, but there's other people out there who would also be like that. Next one, Yokohama. Now, Yokohama's been around for a hell of a long time. It's um, impossible to get now. I think the company went bust or something, but Yokohama, reprint there. Cool, a really solid Euro, just for a lot of people who didn't know that it's gonna be available. Cool, a new version is coming out there, and it's, it's got some, um, you know, we've got some double-sided uh, boards there, which is nice. Hard works, meh. It's a bit old school for me, but anyway. Yokohama, new reprint, great game. Now, this one. I always like to put, whenever I do this list, I always like to put one game on there that isn't for me, but it could be for someone else. Now, 
I think there's always an IP out there that you know people have some sort of attraction to. And for a lot of us, it is video games. We play these video games as we're growing up, and these IPs, you know, things like things like games like Assassin's Creed and things like that, like really great IPs, but do they convert to board games? And that's what I'm interested about. I will probably never ever buy this, but if I got a chance to play it, I would love to play it just to see how it feels, like how they can sort of turn that IP into a board game. So I'm interested to see, but again, not my sort of game. But anyway, there's Far Cry Escape from Rook Islands. And the last board game I want to talk about, where have we got it? We've got it over here. The only reason I want to talk about this is because I'm reviewing this next week. I saw this on the list, Surf's Up. It's an Australian board game publisher, Good Games Publishing. I'm, I'm really excited to get this open. It's still in shrink. I'll be opening it next week. Um, it's going to be a family weight game. It looks great. Let's have a look at some of the photos here. It's going to be, again, lightweight, family weight game. Cool. Surf's up. Wait for that review. Yeah. Just a little plug. Yeah, I like that. Okay, next up, we are getting into the expansions. And the first expansion I want to talk about is Aquatica. Now, oh, let's get Aquatica out. Oh, ah. Oh, everyone, stand down. Chomp is all right. Chomp fell off the table, but Chomp is now all right. <gasps> Aquatica. Aquatica. Such, again, it's such a good game with amazing mechanic where these things are in, like embedded into the board and you slide them down and yeah, so cool, Aquatica. Anyway, we are in the, I guess the dark, you know, oceans and we're sea gods and blah, blah, blah. And there's already an expansion out, Cold Waters, but we have a new expansion called Coral Reefs. So Aquatica Coral Reefs. Anything to add more to Aquatica, like hopefully get more cards, hopefully something more mechanic. What do we got here? So what do we got? We're gonna introduce Southern Tribes, more underwater creatures, new characters, and manta ray encounters that can turn the rules of the game upside down. There you go, heard it right here. Turn it upside down and you play the game. There we go, Aquatica Coral Reefs. Anyway, pumped for that expansion. Distilled, cast strength expansion. Can we still see distilled? We can see it up there, back there. Distilled. Now, spoiler alert, also working on my top 50 board games of all time, Distilled, gonna be extremely high. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, gonna be very high. Oh, I love me some Distilled. This is just gonna be the world's smallest little expansion, just gonna be some cards, and it's just more of the good stuff. New distillery upgrades, special flavors, upgraded premium ingredients, and exciting new dynamic market mechanic. More cards, Distilled. Beautiful, that's the cast strength expansion. Canopy Evergreen, where is Canopy? This one was a real surprise. I got to play it and I didn't realize how good this was. I played this for, it was probably about two months straight. That's how much I loved it. Every time I had a chance, had a bit of free time, I would bring this out. I really was loving Canopy. And so this is Canopy Evergreen, which is actually a standalone game of Canopy. Just again, with slightly different mechanics. Not much more you need to know, really. Um, look, if you like Canopy and I highly recommend Canopy, then you will absolutely love it. Let's look at a couple of photos. Just more more of the same more of the same but different it's best i can explain it evergreen next up cubitos foul play now cubitos push your luck dice bag building game that is just it's just fun it's 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 like heat pedal to the metal but without anything else and just Extra fun added, like, I don't know how to best describe it. Cubitos, a lot of fun. I love bag building games and, and these uh, dice, look, let's read. What does Cubitos foul play add? Well, it's gonna add, it's gonna add two new colors of dice. It's gonna complete with uh, some awesome ability cards. Exciting new ability cards are included in the base game's original eight colors, okay, excellent. A double-sided racetrack, so new racetracks, features new rewards and hazardous obstacles and additional components allow you to race now up to six players. Cubitos, if you're looking for a six player game, there you go, there's an option for you going forward. What have we got next? We have Tiny Town. Okay, Tiny Towns. You know all about Tiny Towns. Have a look at this. We got cubes. Cubes are gonna take different shapes. Once they get different shapes, they're gonna turn into buildings. Those different buildings have different scoring. It's so much fun. Tiny Towns, just another expansion, Architects. Not sure what it adds. Let's find out what it adds. But there's already like three expansions already. There's quite a few already for, for Tiny Towns. But this is gonna add in, Architects been cooking up innovative building techniques using wild resources that allow for a bit of flexibility. 
well, resources are cool. Uh, also design cozy cabins as an alternate alternative to cottages, new monuments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool expansion there for tiny towns. And my last one, Barcelona. Look, Barcelona. It's, it's probably one of the greatest Euro games of last year. A lot of people loved it. Expansion for it. If you liked it, here we go. Passi de Gracia. My worst Spanish ever. Anyway, Barcelona. I don't know what again what it adds. But if you love Barcelona, you're going to get some more Barcelona goodness right there. And that is 30 games talked about. Battery only died once. That's not bad. Look, good fun. Let me know in the comments below. Out of all the games I talked about, what is your most anticipated game? And plus, what game did I miss that should have been on this list that you reckon is going to be amazing? So there we go. That's all I have. Till next time.